All right, today I want to talk about intentional versus unintentional restriction and actually how they're exactly the same when you have a restrictive eating disorder. Your brain responds or reacts exactly the same to intentional restriction versus unintentional. So intentional would be, you know, like actively engaging in your eating disorder, right? Um, unintentional would be, let's see, I've had a couple of clients reaching out saying that they have you know, recently had a procedure like a colonoscopy where they had to fast for the entire day before the procedure. And then depending on what time this, the, the procedure was at the following day, not being able to eat until after that's a good amount of time to be restricting, right. Or fasting. Um, was it her choice to, to do that? Of course not. She had to, but then what happens when you come out of that procedure and your brain's feeling a little iffy and weird, right? It's exactly the same as when you're actively restricting and it can be frustrating when you're in recovery and you're really, really committed to see that happen. But sometimes I think it's a good thing to learn that lesson that, oh my gosh, like regardless of what's going on in my life, no matter how committed I am to recovery, if things come up that I don't intend to happen that allow for restriction, I'm going to have to kind of up my focus and commitment and really ensure that I'm getting enough in. And so, and same thing with after you have a baby, right? I see that a lot after someone has a baby, right? Um, there isn't typically someone's like, okay, you know, I'm going to try to, to, to restrict and eat less after I have this baby. It's just that you're so tired and you're nursing and you're taking care of other kids. If you have other kids and you just feel stretched so thin that it's like this restriction just kind of happens. It doesn't feel intentional, but yet the mental hunger starts increasing, right? And eating disorder thoughts, thoughts start getting louder. And I think people don't take it as serious because it's like, oh, well, I wasn't trying to restrict. So I don't have to like go through like the appropriate actions as if I was intentionally restricting. So this will just naturally play its course and then I'll get back, you know, on track. I'll get, I'll just get back naturally. And it's like, no, you actually have to have a little intervention there and be like, I have to force myself to get back on track. I have to force myself and be very highly conscientious that I'm getting enough food in. I have to listen to all of my mental hunger, even though I didn't really want to set myself up for my mental hunger to increase. It is, and that's what you need to deal with is just the reality of that. It doesn't matter why, if your mental hunger is increased, you must respond to it. Even if you can't explain why, or even if you weren't like, well, it wasn't my fault, I didn't try to, you still have to respond to it. So that's my short and sweet message today, but I feel like I've gotten kind of a um, enough emails or questions or even some clients struggling with this that I thought I'd make a video. Unintentional or intentional restriction, when you have an eating disorder, it doesn't matter. Your brain will react the same by firing up those eating disorder thoughts and by making your mental hunger increase. And regardless if you tried to get yourself there or not, you're there and now you need to respond. And you have to get yourself out of that by eating and resting. Okay, have a good day.